Patients won't be able to do that. After abdominal surgery? Abdominal surgery for sure. Because we've just cut through all of your abdominal muscle. Um, also, a patient who has uh, liver failure or who has heart failure and they've got a lot of fluid on their belly, their chest and their legs don't get much closer together than this. Okay? So it's really hard for them to do. So what we should do is um, we should do a log roll. This is also how we get patients who've had spine surgery out of bed as well. And in fact, I think it's really healthy for your back, and I get out of bed this way every morning, okay? So if I, if I have her, if I try to roll her, I'm gonna put a lot of torque through her spine, so I wanna shorten her body, right? Remember this from interventions? We're gonna bend her knees, and then I'm gonna roll her on her side. So when you roll the patient on the side, where should your hands be? Yeah, scapula and hip. Okay. Most patients are not this easy to move. Okay. What I find, especially with patients who've had uh, an abdominal surgery or a back surgery, I need to give them more support. So I'll actually get my elbow on their hip and I'll move them all the way over. Okay? And I'm maintaining good body mechanics when I do that because I'm bending from my hips and not my back. And I'm not lifting, I'm just pulling over to the side. Okay? Now, the other, um, with a hip patient, so you can go ahead, you're such a good patient. Can you scoot up in the bed a little bit? So the other, with a patient who's had a hip or knee surgery, um, are we going to roll on our side after a total hip? Why not? Okay, so they're, we're going to have at adduction. So that's bad. But what if their surgery's on this side and I roll them this way? Their incision's going to hurt like crazy, so I don't do that. So with a joint patient or an orthopedic patient, I will have them walk their legs over. So I might get to here, and then I might have the, I'll have the patients shimmy their shoulders over. And then I'll keep bringing them over so I'm not crossing midline. Once I get both ankles out of bed, I'll have the patient reach forward. They can grab my arm. I'm going to come up. Okay. So that's one of the ways that I do that. Go ahead and lay back down. Um, the other way, I'm going to use your help. Sure. Okay. Um, I want you to just bring her legs around when I tell you to. Good. So the other thing that I'll do is I'll grab the sheet that the patient is on, and we'll say, on the count of three, you're going to move her legs over. One, two, three. And then I've got the patient here. If I'm going to stay here, I'll put a pillow between myself and the patient so they can kind of relax back. This is a dependent transfer to sitting. If we're going to lay down, go ahead and take her legs up. So we're ready. One, two, three. I'm going to get her back in bed. Can I leave her like this? What's wrong with this picture? It's all wrinkly. So what do I need to do to get the wrinkles out? We're going to roll. So come over towards me and go ahead and pull her blanket up. Yep, and then come on back and then roll towards you. And then once it's straight, we're good to go. Is she rolling to that side? Well, I'm. If, it, if she had a 